morning everybody. Um, my name is Iris Smith and I'm the owner of a small business called The Flower Patch. And good morning and welcome. Um, I did do a little video this morning explaining things on, you know, main rules in flower arrangement and, you know, like the balance, proportion, uh, scale, unity and things like that. Um, harmony as well i hope um, it was easy easy enough to understand i tried to simplify it but um, that's how it is in my head how i was taught and it's you know oh gosh it, like i say on the other video i had to delve into my my brain <laughs> first thing this morning to try and you know uh, write it down in a simplified way because i don't tend to you know really speak about it because I've learnt it and it's just as I say in here I mean don't get me wrong I've got it down in my notes um, what I stored away but um, I haven't picked those out I've just had to remember from my head so um, I hope that uh, you all understood so I just want to welcome again the new subscribers I've had um, and I hope you're enjoying the videos and I hope uh, you watch many more of them and a welcome to the flower patch. Right, now this morning um, I'm going to do something slightly different. Now this is a pedestal stand. What you'd use um, at a wedding uh, where you can put your flowers around it and place something on top for it, your flowers to sit on top. I've had a pedestal arrangement where I've placed in, in fact, I don't know if I've got them, no, I haven't. I've placed in something on the top and then did my flowers. And in total, from the top of my flowers to the bottom, it was five feet, so 150 centimeters high. So um, I've done many of those. But what I wanted to do was put, I've got this little very light, it's like a very, very, very light grey. It might as well be white, <laughs> but it's square. I've put in some pebbles from my garden because what we're going to do, it will be quite weighty. And this container is only plastic. It's not ceramic, so it needs help with the weight of the flowers that are going in. Otherwise, it will just topple over. Again, I've put my oasis in. I've put a couple in and then just put a little bit in the centre to hold it tight. And we're going to put some of our green, instead of moss, green aspidistra leaf on and we're going to glue that in and I'm going to show you how I do that. But first of all, let's go through. Now, I've only just decided to do this after I did the small video this morning. And I saw this in the background and I thought, hmm, I'm going to do something with that. Instead of having the arrangement on top, we're going to build it inside of the frame. So it needs to be quite tall. And I'm all for things like this. As you know, I'm all for big. Oh, let me take this off. I've got my heater on because my cat's in here and now he's gone on the new bed that I made for him to sit on. So hopefully he stays there. So, what we're going to do, I've got, it's purples and whites, and I've got my long stem purple ruscus. I need, I've been going through things thinking I need height. So, obviously I will cut things down, but this has got more than the height. So, I've had to move the camera back so you can see the whole of the stand. I've also got sort of, you know, two, well, two pieces. There's one what's got two, uh, two stems on here. I've chopped away at that one. But of my, also my green ruscus, I thought, let's get that in as well. Now, again, like I always say, I've got a lot out on the, on my workbench. But I, I may, I don't think I'm going to use it all if I'm being relatively honest. I really don't. I just got to do a great bundle of things in purples and whites and thought without preparing it I thought let's just do it by eye and just do it and 
get them on and try and incorporate the texture, the movement, the lines, um, you know, into the actual arrangement. I've also got these out. I can't remember what these call. Um, I really can't. I'm going to have to look things up and probably put tags on things just to remind myself. But then again, there's that much I'd probably forget anyway. But I wanted to use a different texture, the shape and contrast of my leaves instead of the smaller ones all the time. So I needed to have something a bit more fuller. With it being quite big, we need something with bigger, longer leaves in full. I have got out, uh, these are what I've had and they came in with a lot of stems on and I have been hacking at these. I've got a lot of them. I must have about 15 of them just in one bucket. But I may, just for again, another different texture, have something hanging over what's slightly airy, you know, to, you know, contrast against the fullness of these leaves as well. So I did get those. Now I have got out, and I'm not sure about these yet, I'm umming and ahhing, as we say, whether to incorporate those. If I don't have them as high, I may, not necessarily, but may use them. But I've brought them out, just a couple, uh, basically, maybe as a last resort, I don't know. I may put them in first, who knows, we'll see as we go along. Now, I've got these, uh, bay, I think bay leaves or sage leaves, I can't remember. Uh, but these are a couple of these in here have got height and again they are bigger leaves and they will look nice also against the smaller rustus and I've got different colours dark green and I've also got a light green in there um, I've just got one of these crocodile now I've got different types of crocodile fern it's weird that you get different types but they're all called the same some of them but I can understand how now I've got one because I don't know whether I want to put that at the back. I probably had add a pick and use it as the main piece at the back. But then again, I've got to think about if it's going on a floor, it need, may need to be. If it's going up against a wall, then fine, you can have it front facing. But if it's going slightly off of the, a wall or in a hall where you have a party or something or a wedding, you may need to do it as a 360 degrees arrangement so when people walk around it they can see all the way around not just where it's flat on one side so I have to take that into consideration so here are my other crocodile fern and isn't this funny that's the crocodile fern that's the crocodile fern you can see the resemblance but the, these are just in a different texture, well, not texture, smaller variety, because you do get different varieties of a plant, um, and that's all it is. It's just a different variety and shape of the crocodile fern. So I've also got those out. Because they are very thin, they will give me a line and also a movement. So I tend to do just try and look for the linear, which means your lines um, and things that will form a line for me now and I've also just got these out again a, a bigger leaf to put perhaps around the bottom just to finish the area at the bottom because you have to consider it take into consideration again filling I don't know if you can see but filling around the bottom with something so if I can just pull one out because oh, I pulled a bunch out trying to look for a single one that I've perhaps put back in here we go so you need to be putting something around the bottom to give it a movement around the bottom and also a filler to hide your oasis but also to give it a nice heart you know harmonic look and plus you also it needs to have a bit of proportion and scale with everything else so I've got those out because they look very quite similar to the bigger ones. So I've got these out to go. So it looks like these are the baby ones of these big ones. I'm trying to bring them in together with each other. 
so I've got those now for our floral I have got one big white I've had to bend this because I was testing it earlier how high I need to cut it um, but oh my gosh this is I'm gonna measure that that's got to be more than 90 centimeters guys if it's not then oh Yeah, it is. I knew it was more than 90 centi 95 centimetres long, which is, I don't know what that is in inches. I've been brought up in centimetres. That is 37 and a half inches long from tip to the bottom of it. From the top to the bottom, sorry. So that is very, very long. So I had to bend it because I wanted to measure where I was going to cut and it's around here to fit within the frame. I don't mind the odd bit if it's just poking here, but I don't want anything right to the top above. I'm trying to keep within the frame today. Obviously I'm gonna have bits floating out, hence the reason I've picked a smaller one so I can have little bits hanging over and not going out too much out of the frame. Now I've also got my purple long roses where there's two roses on one stem and but I've chopped away at one of them so I've got five so I've got my beautiful nice lovely lilac deep lilac with purple shaded deeper shade into it and I've got those out because they against them I did stand there and I did do that I do that when I pick things out I do get the bucket stand there look back at them to see if the contrast is good and if they bounce off of each other now I've got these proteas I keep calling them brassica because I can't bear my mind up whether they're brassica or a protea now I know what they both look like I think the brassica is more of a cabbage look and I think these are the proteas if I'm being honest I ought to get me me uh, <laughs> my flower book back out there's that many new flowers and I've also got out, now these are a lovely lilac hydrangea. I've got three, I've cut, those two have been cut out probably when I was wanting to use them, probably didn't, but I thought we can have different heights of them in and look at the colours on that. I have got other colours, I've got, I've had a look at the other purples, but when I placed it again against the white, that looks divine. Now I've had darker one, but my eye kept being drawn to this one. So like my saying is, if in doubt, take it out, or if in doubt, leave it out. And I left the others out because my eye kept being drawn to the smaller petals than the larger ones. So we've got those. Now I've got some uh, Jiminis out. Jiminis basically are the smaller ones of the gerberas. The gerberas are the bigger heads. The smaller ones are called Jiminis. Now I've got these in white. I've got out some on smaller stems and just about five on the longer stems. And I'm not sure, but I may either incorporate those because it was uh, either those Oh my beautiful white carnations. I couldn't make my mind up. They both looked nice. So I'm gonna try as we go along to see which one fits the best. So I've got those as well. Quite a few bunches of the carnations actually. So we've got those. Now I did only get three of these out, the bulrush in white. Now this would act as my airiness, my movement and also texture. So that will perhaps come around the bottom because I don't want them at the top, around the bottom in three different places like on the clock, six o'clock, 10 o'clock, two o'clock, to and that's your balance. Because in, in even numbers, it doesn't usually look balanced. And I, and I know some people may think it does because it's four corners, it's all even, everything's great. In floristry, odd numbers, make it look balanced so and it all and it also it gives the correct spacing between things as well 
I know some people may question that and may think no it doesn't but honestly guys I was taught that and I and I've always gone by that and it does work and also I thought we'd get a few little bits now some more eeriness to add a different more texture instead of the the big or the small full flower heads I thought we'd have a bit different texture in a deep deep purple and these I got from Bella's Wholesale Flowers online when she does an online sale and I got them from that. These are beautiful. I love these. I've used them in a lot of things I've, I've done in purple. Um, but yes, we're going to add those as well. I may add a tall one up at the top and some at the bottom. And of course, I've just grabbed a great, the, one of my big bunches. As I say, I buy them um, in bulk. My calla lilies. I wanted white because we have got a lot of purple. Uh, so I wanted white. Basically, if I can find an old one, yeah. For movement at the bottom. If I want to add movement to the top, I will get some of my longer stems that I save from my flowers and that that I cut off and I will attach it and bring it higher up. So that is everything. So I, again, there is a lot here. And I'm only going because of the size of our framing and also the container it's slim line this is slim line so we need to do slim arrangement to balance even the container and you know your accessories and everything if you put in accessories in balance them all out because that's important it's all right doing it nice here and beautiful here but your container is just as important to your arrangement it needs to also be balanced in with your flowers. I sound like a, a, a school teacher, but honestly, guys, I'm just trying to help you understand, you know, and for when you do your own beautiful arrangements, so it's easier for you to place things out and around and, you know, balance them out equally. I'm just, you know, I love helping people do it but I love helping them do it correctly. I would never, ever, ever give false information out. Um, if some people may be skeptical skeptical of what I'm saying, please look it up because I'm not wrong. I'm really not wrong. So, oh, these keep falling off. I'm gonna have to keep gluing these on. So I want to start with this anyway, but before we do, let me just move that. And these you can get anywhere. Where did I get mine from? I purchased some more just recently, about four or five months ago. They may have been off of eBay. And these, I'll do it as it's lying down. These come apart. You can take them, oh, if I can, I don't want to. <laughs> take them off look so you can store them away lovely and the top comes off as well so you can have them all stored away flat so they don't get in your way because some people may think oh gosh they're too big and then you just push them back on if I can't I did it earlier let me do it while I'm down here it's the hard there we go and then just push them back down back on and then you've got your stand again. So let's get our Aspidistra leaf ribbon, which I honestly, guys, I think everybody should have these because if you run out of moss or you haven't got spray, and plus you get them on, um, I think it's a 10 meter roll, or let me have a look. No, 50 yards. A 50 yard roll so they go a long way than what your moss a bag of moss would so I swear by these so I'm not telling you to spend your pennies guys I'm really not but I'm just trying to give you some advice on this will help with your costs as well I think there may be around anything from 8 to 10 pound per roll sometimes people charge more but they are well worth the money 
So what I'm going to do is glue them down. I've done them, measured them slightly longer so I can tuck the sides in like that. So it's, it's blending well within there. On the end here, I can't tuck it down the sides there. It'd be a bit too finicky as we say. So I'm going to just move and place the ribbon right to the edge of the container. So first of all, I want to get my skewer something thin. Don't put too much glue on because you'll get it everywhere. And just scrape it like that. And obviously remove it off your fingers. And first of all, I'm going to just widen that. And place that there and then just press with my container basically because I can't get my little my stubby fingers down there and I'm not gluing it all the way across I'm only gluing it on the ends so I'll turn that around there because this will hold just as well by being glued just on the ends turn it upside down and just scrape it on remove any glue by twisting your score around placing it down the side, making sure that it's all secure. Oh, I can get my finger down that one. I must have thin fingers on one side and fat on other. <laughs> so I've brushed that so it's really close to the front of the container. So now it's glued on both sides. So I do the same, I've cut four pieces because I've measured how I want them placed. I overlap, as you can see like that. Let me just place that there. Oh goodness gracious me. I overlap it slightly. And if you wish, you can put a little bit on there so you don't see any of it lifting up slightly like that. I do do that as well. So I'll show you how I do that. And again, just run it off and place it. Now this is going to overlap slightly. Just press my finger down on it. And just make sure it's not too far down. So I've got a bit to go down the other side. Just press it onto that bit there. And I'm going to do the same on that side. But again, if you want you to do this so it doesn't just get a little bit, or your glue gun, whichever you use, and just do the same. Just gently rub it like you're stroking your pet. And then just bring it off of there. And then as you're going over, press it down like that as you're going along. So it sticks to that one on top. And any excess glue that may have seeped out, like this bit has, just quickly rub it before it dries and it will come off very, very easily. So then that, oops, is your next one. So again, I want to overlap it again. So we'll, we'll do the same procedure. First of all, I want to get it placed and I'm just stroking it away from me. And any glue strings. It may be easier if you have a glue gun to do this, but I don't mind. Let me just move it open so I can get that down. And place that on to overlapping I am overlapping so that then becomes like that so then I'll get my glue again I should have got my glue gun out for this because this can be quite messy I'm just going up Oh, I don't 
put a lot on. <laughs> I don't want to overdo it. And then on the bottom, just scrape it away. And again, just got it caught. Stroke it as you go along. And then place it down. And again, just as you put pressure on it, if any glue seeps out, quickly remove it before it dries hard. Because once it dries hard, guys, if you try to remove it off of it once it's hard, it will take some of the colour of the leaf off in the green off of it. It won't rip the leaf, it will just take the colour off. last piece and if you think you need more you know pieces that's all right get more on as long as it's covered and you are happy with with it and again I'm going across Just gonna a glue like I say a glue gun would be easy and easier to do. Oh gosh, that one was good. <laughs> oh I'm trying to make sure that it this also ends. Let me get that off my fingers. Place that one also. Down the side. And if, before it quickly sets, because that one's moved, because we're right at the tip of the container. I've got glue all over me. Again, it's so messy. I should have got my glue gun out. Now I can see a little bit of a lift down here. I don't want that. I want it to be pressed down firmly. So there we go. So let me clear my nails and fingers. Well, my stubbies. <laughs> so, any glue, if it's caught on your container, it comes off quite relatively easy on containers, plastic and ceramic. So let's get rid of all the glue around it. I've just seen one there. So then that is what we have done. So I've overlapped it, glued the overlap pieces down as well. So there's no gaps going throughout there. The only gap that you may see is right at the end but I can't get it right onto the container. I don't want it to stick to the container because you may have seeps of glue popping out and I don't want that to be on show. So, there we have it. Beautiful. So you can either work with this being in here. Um, let me move my things. Because if you need to be like, looking for the height of what you want things and how you'd like them you need to have it with you instead of just judging it and keep having to measure it with your tape measure which you, you can do it like that but it can take longer it's best to have it here again i don't mind this little bit popping up at the top because there's not too much of it so let me get these leaves to start with that have fell off Right, one there. So use mascara because I can't dip this in. I can't 
because it's too close to the leaf. And then I'm just going to glue it back on. That's that one. Now I've got one more, so where did that come from? Then on the same stem. <coughs> Gluing it at the tip where the hole is for it to go into the thing. The very small holes, these. There we go. Right, where are my clippers? Now then. Oh, I haven't got them out. <laughs> got my scissors, but that's it. Let's take this tag off. Right, now I've had a look, and if before you want to chop it, because I only want about two, three inches, probably three inches of the stem going in. So I will place it in there to the point I need. Look at the back. If I do it from your side so you can see how I'm measuring. Again, I just want a little bit sticking up. Oh, another leaf's popped off, and I want about two, three inches, so I need to cut approximately about there. So if I just press my clippers on it. Now where's that? Oh, that one's come off another place. And I'm going to save that, because I may need it for something else. Oh, I hope I'm not going to end up gluing all these back on. So, let me cut it at a 45 degree angle. So that makes it easy to go through your oasis and also the aspidistra leaf. Now I want to place this. Again, we need it to come out and this is going center. Keep checking the top, that is not too high. No, that's all right. Any glue around, and just take it off. In fact, I'm gonna get a piece of the Aspidistra and I'm gonna show you what it's like when you leave, leave it to dry. And then you peel the glue off. You know, something else just to give you an idea of why I say remove the glue straight away. This is just a little tip, you know, hit, you know a bit of advice, should I say. So you don't have to keep cutting it. So we'll put a bit of glue on. I'm just going to let that dry at the side. Right, now I've put this purple one in, you manipulate it into any position. Instead of having it just vertical, I'd like to have a bit of movement in it and give it its own little bit of space and just also manipulate don't always have just the straight stem you can if that's the look that you're going for but i like movement natural movement so i'm going to bring some up taking into consideration people may walk around so i'm going to bring some of the leaf out at the back as well just slightly again i don't want to try and make this like i do with others really big I'm trying to keep it slim. So now with this one, I'll bring this one forward. 
just slightly again because I don't want it too far forward. And slightly put a bend in it. And with this one, just a slight little bend at the top and place it coming slightly in the centre. So they've all got space. I can see a prong there without a leaf on, so I'm going to chop that off. And one of those where they're attached. You know when they're attached, when they're in transit? That's what that the, some of these are. So I'm going to remove those. There's another little prong here without a leaf. Let me just check. Oh gosh, this just always check guys because customers may think that something's dropped off if there's a prong or one of the leaves have dropped off let's get these other things that where they attach to the next stem off as well so there you have it for, for your purple ruscus Let's slightly bring this one out a little bit, like that. So now I have the green ruscus. Now this is really compact and tight together because that is how it is, you know, made and brought. And again, manipulate it. Move the stem to give the contrast, uh, the natural look. as well. Now I don't know whether I want them cutting down here and bringing slightly shorter and bringing them there. I think I will but I only want to have three of these in and as you can see I've chopped that one smaller so I may bring that just to the side or here or also to the back but I do also need something here or I could do with this one actually at the back and place that one at the back so let's get that one here we'll say at the back it's because that's how you're looking at it but again just keep reminding yourself it's an all around arrangement Yeah, they just call it the single ruscus spray. That's all it is. Now, I'm going to want one perhaps a bit bigger here as well. So I'm going to take pull these off at the end so I've got more of a stem to play with and to insert into the oasis. And I'm going to cut the prongs off. And again, I'm going to move it into a natural position. Just with that little bit of a bend, it makes all the difference, guys. And it's like I've said on the video, it's more pleasing to the eye. So this one is going at two o'clock, or should I say, you're looking at it around eight o'clock. Let's just grab that blue before it sets. And just slightly lift it. And just manoeuvre it. Once it's in, you can manoeuvre it into a different position. I'm going to lean that on there. I think that looks pretty. So, I want this one smaller. I don't want to be doing everything all the same height. I want to give it a balance of looking diff, uh, natural, but also at different stages of its growth, should we say. And this one here. Yeah. Now, if you can hear any drilling, guys, it's my next door neighbour, as I said, they've had a, having new fencing put in. 
So I, I apologise for the noise. So I just want to make sure if that one's coming out too much. Again, I'm trying not to go out too far. I know that one is, but I don't want it. That'll be better. So I'm going to save these. I'm going to save the bits that I've chopped off because I can put stems in those picks and make something from them. So now we have our lovely fuller leaf. Now I don't know how many I'm going to put. I'm going to get to start with. I will get three. I'm not going to go crazy and get five because it may be too much. So we'll just put those back here. Let me just check as well with this. No, I didn't think it would, would be go with it. It was just, it may do at the bottom, but mm, we'll keep that out. And let's also see about, I'm getting the limey colored ones, not the dark, the lime, because look how that lime bounces off the or the orange bounces off the line the orange oh gracious what time we are 20 past 11 <laughs> i'm already making mistakes but i may so i'm going to try and get one off just to have a look again i said i didn't know whether i'm going to use them all or or not yes three of those in the line as well so they can go on the floor i don't need those i'm just going through guys to see now then do i or don't i that's dark so i'm just having a look to see i'm gonna get this out i've got a smaller one here I can also use these down here yeah they look lovely so let's just get oh my god gracious moon those out put those on the floor as well and I'll put those there and with these like I've said Yes, I want something at the bottom, so I'll keep those ones and put those out of the way. This is how I eliminate. I'm not going to have that because I've only got one out, and with it being an all-rounder, I'll use these instead, which are beautiful for a bit of diff movement. So we'll get three of those for now. Let's get different sizes. We'll cut them too. So... That's the foliage, what we're going to be putting in out of all of those. Not much, is it? Because <laughs> I do want this arrangement also, so you, quite, you can so you can see bits through it. So it's not all, you know how we put the filler foliage in to cover the oasis? That's not my uh, purpose today. It needs to be able to see through it, so you can see the top of the container. <laughs> excuse me sorry it's my chest infection it's just not moving um, so you can see through it I've got a bit of glue there right where's my pliers now I'm just trying not to get this without taking any colour off there we go these are brilliant they'll grab at anything so that is what at my idea in my head is it needs to be airy so let's see I'm going to take off pull off on the palm some at the end some leaves to give me a longer stem to be able to place it into the oasis and be secure without being too weighty so I'm going to bring one in this corner. Quickly wipe the blue off. And just put a slight little bend on it again. 
I don't want it too far out. Now that's slightly too much. So lift, push it back up again because I don't want it too big. Um, the next, you know, how I usually do it. Again, this is a different design. A bit more simple, or a bit more of a simplicity of, you know, structure. one will come up to the your front as you're looking at it let me switch that heat off it's making me sweat Oh, I bet you can hear me now. The cat's fast asleep on his new bed. Ah, oh, it worked. <laughs> Saves him being on here with me. So, as you can see, these are all airy plants that you can see through. That's basically what we would say when we say airy. It's where you can see through it and it's also beautiful movement. Now, we're going to get some more airy because the flowers will take up... Um, you know, some of the airiness, so you've got a balance. How many did I get? Three. So I'm going to have to do it like that. Stay there. One at the my back, at, at your back as you're looking at it, and then one also there. So these are rubber. So again, with the rubber stems, let me just chop that bit off because it's usually a harder piece at the bottom to stop anything, the wire falling out. The rubber stems, I don't chop into the wire. I just make a little split around. Let me just, like that. Twist it and pull it off. So there's your wire because the rubber melts and it will squash right up like that on top of the oasis once you put it in. It won't go in unless you give it some welly, which is a lot of force, but then it could begin to make it look a bit messy. And we don't want that, guys. So, I'm going to put one here. Let me just get that glow before it melts. I'm just waiting for that one to, because I've put a big dollop on it. <laughs> there we go. Right, I've put the glue on there and this is my point about the Aspidistra by removing the glue as quick as possible. If you leave it to go dry like that, and then you peel it off thinking, oh my goodness, I don't want that on. Look what it does. It ruins it. It takes off the green from the back and leaves you with a white splodge. So that is why, guys, I do advise you to take it off as quick as possible. Because you don't want on your arrangement little white blobs like that of white where you've took your glue off. Because as you can see, if I bring it closer, so that's the effect that you have left on it once you've removed the glue. Now on your glue at the back, if I hold the little strand there, it's took off the Aspidistra pattern and that's what your glue will do. That's just another, another tip for you, another bit of advice if you're using it. So, and again, I should, oh, I've got it. I'll cut a bit off of the here. I'm not gonna have them all the same size, 
or height should I say let's talk properly height I'm going to bring some lower now this is coming out a bit at the back so I'm going to just slightly lean it in and let the tip of it act as it's coming out because if it's going to be at a wedding or something like that and people kiddies are running around it you don't want them to get caught onto it to the point where it pulls it over or may do some damage i'm going to place that one down here i mean i'm sure the kiddies won't won't do that or you have to take you know just take all different things into consideration it's not that i'm saying people's kiddies are naughty it's just safety really you have to take it to safety precautions and just always say in case you never know and again i'm going to place this one in there and slightly lift that so that is our crocodile fern now put now we have these now let me just flatten these out this is what i do with things like that because they come like that closed up it's just how the, the, the you know they sit in the packaging if you've got a steamer a little you know use a steamer on it or an iron by just placing something over the top of the leaf you don't want to melt it and, and just flatten it out I do that sometimes it may work it may not but it does open it a little bit more than what it was like that right with these now these are going to go around in here I may have because obviously the smaller ones I'm having around the bottom so I want these in the center that it's got a bit of plastic on it and again I'm going to place that one sharpen the glue I may seem a bit serious today. There's nothing wrong with me. I just got the the teaching head on. Um, usually I have a fab fun when I'm teaching as well, but you know, or showing people what to do, like yourselves and that. But for some reason, I think it's when I oh, when I've just uh, done the small video this morning, and I've been explaining and delving into my brain, and I've been explaining about you know, all the rules of flower arranging and things like lines and things. It's my teaching has just ooh, hit me in the face. So it's just, it's just giving me that seriousness head, if you know what I mean. For, for like, if you, you know, if I'm teaching somebody or showing somebody, you know, in person how to do things, like I've shown my friend before and I ended up with a teaching head on with that as well. But... And she's a florist, but she says she's not done nothing like this. She's just bouquets, funerals, weddings, nothing like this. So she found that quite different, and she need she'd like she was interested in knowing. So, and yeah, so my, my teaching head just kicked in. Oh, don't worry, it'll go by end of day. Because <laughs> as soon as I've done my video, you know the first thing I do if nobody's here. I run into that house and I make myself a cup of coffee and grab some biscuits or a piece of cake and then I come back in here and I sit just looking at my flowers and put the radio on eating my chocky biscuits and that that's my secret don't you ever dare tell anybody it's my secret my husband don't even know that 
well, he, he don't watch my videos because he knows my work, so he, he doesn't watch them, so win-win. <laughs> so, right, there's one missing on the top, so I'm going to cut that off there. I'm just going to have a few of these little ones down here. Cut that one off. Let's just check. You see, there's nothing at the top. So I don't know if that's supposed to be representing the end of this stem, but I don't like that. Not on this, these leaves anyway, because that doesn't look like, that looks like something's popped off and you've left it. And I don't like that. Because that's where, when I say, I don't know if you can see, to say it looks a little bit like that, you, you know, it could be hidden by the leaf. But then as soon as you pull it down, the leaf, look at the length of that, just bare. Now that doesn't look right to me. It's not professional. And that would be removed. That's That gets removed immediately. You see now on this one, it's got a little bud stopping it. So that shows me that's the end of it. So the, the buds have either fell off of those or there just wasn't any on. That's got a bud on as well. So because that hasn't, I've took it, took that stem off. I don't like, I, don't, I really don't like to see that guys. I think it makes it look meh, tacky, as we say tacky, which is not very nice, not pleasing to the eye. It makes your customers start wondering about you, how you make your things. So I'm going to place this here. There's not much more. There's only a couple more of these and then the bottom ones and then it's, we're on to the floral. Again, because I didn't want a lot in of foliage. Like I can, I love my foliage. Oh, go on in. But you have to take into consideration different styles. Again, which will draw your customers in. You know, I've always stated that it's lovely to do one certain type of flower design. You know, like some people just do wreaths. Um, oh, I do wreaths. Wreaths is one of my favourites. Wreaths and funerals are my ultimate favourites. If I could do wreaths all day at all funerals, I would. But that's just me because that's what I like. But the customers out there in the big about wild world may not think like you. You have to think like those, or like other people, and what their needs are. I was always reminded of that when I was at doing my university course, always. Oh, this one's hard to get in. There we go. Just bring that one back around the back, and I'm gonna wrap that and twist it around this, the frame. And then the small one, I'm going to put a different height one at the bottom here. So I'm listening out for a van again. I've got a delivery and I don't know when they're coming. They just said today. So it could be any time. Right, so I'm not gonna put these in so they can go back. Again, keeping it airy, as you can see, you can see, still see all the way through. It's all airy. Right, again, I'm not going to put these all the way around so they're next to each other, you know, as we say, like that. I'm not doing that. I may put one here, one here. Oh, let me just hold that, keep that there, if it will. Oh no. Or I may put one, you see this is where you can do it. One there, one there, 10 o'clock, and then one here. In fact I will. That's what we'll do. We'll have three of those as well. So again, keep it simple. Just keep that in, in your mind guys when you're doing it everybody. We all you lovely designers out there, keep it in your mind if you're doing a simple arrangement. Keep it simple because it's easy. Really, I've done it before myself a few times in the past. It's very easily 
it, not easily, easy to forget that because you've got it in your mind, oh yeah, a bit of foliage, let's put that there, that there. It's so easy to go out of that, that zone and that mind frame of simplicity. Honestly, I have done it. I really have. I'm not going to lie. And then once I've done it, it's like, oh no, I've not kept it simple. And then I've had to go with what I've done. And sometimes it's not what the customers ask. So, and then me being so picky, I've took it all apart and started again. Cleaned all the stems down, everything, and redone it. Because, again, like I say, it's the customer's choice. Yeah, it's very, very easily done. But don't feel bad about it, because like I've always said many times, you can rectify it. You really can. That's the best thing about these artificial... I mean, when I've had to take it apart, I've pulled it out... Um, and I've got uh, a cloth, a sponge or something in warm water, not red hot, with a bit of uh, washing up liquid. And I've rubbed off all the glue and cleaned all the stem. Taken the oasis out, put new oasis in because that would have had holes in from where I placed. Cleaned the container and then started again. It's just something that you, you know, if you're that picky like me, that you would that you that you'd just do you know there's no harm in it guys really and like i say that's the best thing about these artificial and again i'm just keeping this frame i could easily take the frame off but i want to keep it the frame above it because this is how i work when i do these i keep the frame there because again it could be easily done but if I remove that, that I could end up going wider. I need this frame to keep me focused on where my placement of flowers will be. It, sometimes you may, it may be annoying being in the way, but it's a it's, it basically acts as a guidance for you, for your placement, and you, you can't go wrong. So it, it does help you. So that's another little tip. Instead of removing it and then putting it back and thinking, oh gosh, I've gone too wide. It's too bulky. It's not very airy. It doesn't look right. It's not sitting correctly inside the frame now. What do I do? So, I mean, if you, if you, you know, you can do it without that and keep that simplicity in your head and, you know, that's fine. I've done it before like that. Right, we're on to our flowers. Now I've only got one of these gladiolis out because that is going in the centre with the purple. Now, with the gladiolis, you cannot see all the way around. But I am placing it in front of here so if somebody walks around this side, around where I am now, at least they see the purple leaf. It's just something, you know, if you want to have two back to back in in there, uh, where's the other one? Let me show you. I've done that as well before. Where you have just two, place them in back to back like that. But my advice is why do that when, oh, here we go again. <laughs> I just want to show you that it's my teacher egg today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Wow. If you want something back to back to make it look fuller all the way around, why don't you just use something like that? What's round when the flowers are all the way around instead of using more than you need. You could easily, with this delphinium, place that there instead and you'll be able to see all the way around. So that is a chore because I think we're putting two back to back. You, you could be easily wasting your, your products when there's a simple solution. I mean, again, I love the gladiolis. I adore gladiolis. 
so do I do it now? Now I'm questioning myself. Let me see if I've got a taller dolphin here. Yes. Oh, I'm going to use one of these now. <laughs> oh, I'm questioning myself, guys. So I've got another one. So I'm not using those now. Now I've questioned myself. But again, I'd rather tell you how to do it. What's the, what's the point of me telling you how to do it and I'm not doing it? See what I mean? I'd rather you know right the way to do it. And this is all, all round and it's got its foliage. So we'll bring that in there. And that's the a similar height to where it's going to sit. So let me just put a 45 degree angle on the bottom. In fact, this has got like flocked, like lamb's ear on the stem. And it comes off relatively easy. And it can look messy. You can just scrape it and it comes off. So I don't know whether... I'm going to get some white, because the stem's white, I'm going to get some white coarse order tape, guys, again. Cover up anything that looks... You know, I mean, that's not my fault. That's come like that. If you don't want to see it, cover it with the same colour as what your the stem is. And it was white and it still is, as you can see, bits there. So I'm going to, again, blending it in, then making it look, you know, uneven, messy, because that does look messy with it peeling off like that. So I don't want that happening. Take that bit off of the bottom. So I'm going to sort it out. Now you've got the white stem all the way down and it doesn't now look messy. So I've now cut that. And I'm going to place this here. Oh, it's so tough this, because the thickness, there we go, there we go. And that will just sit like that. Now let me just have a quick look from the front, because here I go. I need to see that you can see it as well. Right, I'll bring it over slightly. Let's bring this mat over a little bit. You may be able to get a better shot there. So it looked like it was too more near the end of the screen on the camera. And I think that wasn't very good. So I'll keep that tape there. Now, here we go. Let me... And again, I may not put all of these in. Where's that come from? Yes. I could get it on. Oh well. Again, I may not use all of these. I'm definitely putting these hydrangeas in. I've got a mixture of all the flowers so let's get these tags off which can be a pain right. now before I cut the long stem I want to see, because bear in mind, what I see this side, you will see your side. There are differences that some of the foliage is placed in a different position. But concerning the balance of the flowers, I don't want to go higher now than this delphinium. That needs to stay below there. So I'm trying to mimic it going down in stages, like a ladder with the flowers and doing that down 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 
So that is what we are aiming for. So let me see. I think I need to take that one off. Where's that other big one? I use the longer stems and just use three. Take the smaller ones off. I mean, I could use those at the bottom, so we'll keep those there. But my main aim is for longer ones to be at the top. So, let's see that. Let's see. Yes, just there. Well, they're wobbly. <laughs> These are very wobbly. And I like it because I've got, I've had done them before and I've put them on my garden and it's very thick stem at the bottom. Just when the wind blows and they do, they do what they're doing now. They just move like a natural rose or flower. that one a bit more it's not very sharp it's probably why I was struggling to get it in I didn't cut it at a sharp 45 degree angle take that glue off stuck to me that's better Bring it down. Let's move some of the foliage down the stem as well. So it looks more natural. Do the same on that one. There. So I've, again, taking it into consideration, I don't want these sticking out too far. I want to keep them within relatively short area inside I really don't want them I don't want them out there because I'm not going out there again I want to stay within or virtually within the um, frame I keep wanting to call it a container Now, because we've not got really much floral going off here, we're going to place that one there. I could put a fourth so it's all around. I think that may look better. Hmm, we'll see. This is where I get fussy. So let's place this one. Going near the centre, that's where I'm placing it. And the reason I'm placing it near the centre is so it doesn't go out too far. I mean, I can bend it to go out, but I'm trying on this occasion not to. I will put a little tilt on the flower, but that is it. Let's get that glue, what I saw. I think we may need one up here. So let me go and get one of my long stems. I've put a few round a band last night. Right, we need the one nearest to the colour. There. These are from the flowers that, I'm, that you see me cutting when I shorten the flowers. Now these are ideal for extending or even pushing up into the flower if you've just got the head and using it as a stem. So we've got green, so we need our green pot, uh, corsage tape. Oh, I've just dropped the brown one. So I've got a hook on the side here with them hanging down on them. I should really bring it round here. So again, these are going to be, let me just check, yeah, need it a bit lower down. So I've got some room to get it into 
the oasis that's another thing if you've got more than one in just check so it comes up to there but by the time the oasis, it's in the oasis i've you know it's given me ample length all my other parts on the roof to place it in to hold it into the oasis I've done that before where I've measured it on top <laughs> and then when I push it in it's lower and I've stood there why is that lower and realized what I've done I learnt my lesson from doing that because like I say I, I tend to beat myself up about it if it's wrong and I'm not too happy with myself because I know I should know better so yeah I do <laughs> but I've never done it since Oh, here we go. You'll hear the drilling now through here. So sorry guys, in advance. Oh my goodness. So that is as far out while I will take these flowers. I've just bent that one slightly in. So if I could turn it around and show you from my side as well. There we have it. So it's not, it's not out here. Uh, I'm keeping it. You can see it's come out, but it hasn't come out too much. If you think you still don't want it out that far, just tilt the head at the top and bring the stem in. That's all I do. Just to keep it more of a line. Bend it inwards and then outwards on the head of the flower. So it's a bit more compact and next to each other. So that, when I turn that around, if you can see now, I've shortened that from going out of that line. So I've done it with that one, so I will do it also with the others. So they're all relatively sitting around the delphinium. Now I don't want that one, because now we've got those there. What I want to do with these, can get these are really thick stems I want these to come in around here so before I put those in I either add in some more height but the height needs to go one step below or around it's hard to show when you can't bend them I've got a smaller one for yeah use this one for an example I need to be bringing these around here. So you've got your top of your ladder, your second step. Now this is your third step. So it's across, down, down. And that is what I'm going, I'm trying to achieve. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's down. It's not gonna be a, um, you know, uh, a triangular shape, front facing or anything. It's just the positioning so Again, like I said, uh, where people then can see when they look, your customers, and spot each individual flower. Instead of it, I mean, don't get me wrong, when you do compact ones, you can still spot them, but when it's like this, they can look, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I, oh, look at that one there as well. And that's what they notice, and I love it. So I think if I'm being honest, I'm not going to put in the Jiminis. I think, no, they look slightly lost because they are tiny. So we'll keep the Jiminis out. I had to bring them across just to see and give me a different choice. Let me just see with the ball rush. Hmm, I'll hang on to those. But I also want to show you what I want to do with these. I know it looks like I'm rushing, uh, uh, not rushing, but changing my mind which one I'm going to be working on next. That's not the case. I'm extending them. So we've got something with movement placed in as well. That's all I want to do. So if I just 
move that there so I can work here. So I've got everything on hand. And again, I'm just tying corsage tape around and I'm pulling it fairly tight, but not too tight that it's going to snap off. I'm making it look really neat so it's not noticeable that you've got corsage tape on it. So I'm going to do, to start with again, just three. I'm pushing these right up to the top. We may need four or five. If we have, could place one on either side actually, so it's an all round movement with these fine lilies. One more, take that plastic off that one. Now my white cat will be going absolutely crazy on the roof. She's very skitty, very skitty, uh, and she doesn't like loud noises. So she will be going absolutely crazy. I may have to go and let her in the house because she's frightened of things like that. Even, uh, you know, if you've got a plastic bag or, you know, you know when you go in your bin bag in the kitchen, you're emptying your bin. So you take the uh, bin liner out of your bin. That noise even bothers her. She doesn't like it at all. So, if, and that's not very loud to us anyway. So... But just things like that. I don't know if she's got sensitive ears or what, but she just doesn't like it. It frightens her. She goes whappy. She's running around the house looking for somewhere to hide. Do you know how your cats and dogs are when it's thundering and lightning? Uh, and they don't like that. That's how she is with plastic bags. Plastic carrier bags. Or even paper bags. It's the sound of... I think it's the sound of the ruffling they don't, she don't like. But with saws going electric saws she doesn't like that when my husband does i built this and things and the electric saw she has run she doesn't like it so i may have to pause to go and take her in because i don't know how long they're going to be there and she will i don't want to end up being depressed and oh that scares me but let me just put these in first yeah, she's running. She's running. I can hear her footprints. Let me just put these in. I'm going to place these coming out each corner. And again, these. This is just a different, another different texture and movement. Again, I don't want them out too far. Let's lean that one back in a little bit. So I'm going to turn this around and show you from that side. They're just here. I know that they've got to remove one of the concrete posts so that oh I don't know the thing is when she's outside I don't know where she goes and hides she just runs so who knows just get that as you can 
see it's still airing and spitting at the bottom. Again, that is what I wanted because one, with, with the height, you are, your eye is drawn away. It's not drawn to the bottom. It's drawn here as soon as you spot it. So, right, one moment, guys. I really do need to go and get the cat in. One moment before she runs like mad. I won't be long. Welcome back guys, I'm out of puff. I've just had to chase her around the garden. Oh my good gracious me, what a rigmarole that was. Oh, so once I did that and got her in the arse, I decided to make myself a coffee. Oh, and also when I came in and I, well, when I was making a coffee, an idea came into my head. Excuse this uh, little, oh. Gosh, let's just get in. I thought, with us having purple at the top, why don't we, if I can find the end. Gosh, I'm shattered. Let me just un unravel it. I can find the way that I've gone with it. Yeah. I thought, why don't we have some wisteria. I've got my thin wisteria out because it's very, we're doing a, a very clean, airy look. I could have got the thicker one out, but I wanted to think, why don't we have some hanging from each corner and maybe from the top, well, not, not here, from the corners hanging down with white up here because we've got purple. So, gosh, I'm hot now, running around after a cat. She was hiding in the bushes and everything. And as soon as I got my hands out to grab her, she ran again. Yeah. So the guys next door who were doing the fencing have just apologised. I said, it's not your fault. <laughs> Things have to be done. So. Oh. Right, let's carry on. I've got rid of the th other things as well, what I had on the floor, put those back. So we're only left with a few things now. Right, I'm going to take this bottom leaf off and I'm going to be placing these around here. I was looking at these and I thought I may lower those now because I'm, I'm going to be putting the uh, carnations. So let me pull those out. Oh, Because I stood back and had a good look. And it just looked slightly odd. So I may end up keeping them low again. But hey ho, I'd rather get this right. I'm holding the aspidist relief on so it doesn't pull up when I'm taking it out. Gosh, there we go. Oh gosh, I'm really hot now. Right, let's get the coordinations in. Oh my goodness, that really did get me. I don't think I've run so much in my life. I thought that the uh, the guys who were doing the thing was going to laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, so I want to put these up here instead. So I'm going to cut again. These are really thick stems from these. I'm not t taking any off. I'm keeping them as the old stem for the movement as well. I'm just going to manoeuvre them in different areas. So they've got their own space. Oh dear. Oh. So I'm going to place, that one can go through there and I'm going to place these here. If we could get these in because they're really thick stems. I may have put a bit of force in guys. Let me. There we go. Do I want it any smaller? Yes. I think it's caught onto another stem. Oh gosh, do I have to take it out now? Remove that glue. Oh. 
that's that's better twist it around and place them slightly lower again i'm going to just bring some of the heads out different directions oh my goodness i can't believe that <laughs> So it's like that. Let's do the same with this. Oh, these are really, really big stems. And I'm going to pour it up. One. I'm going to put one here and the one at do I bring one here? I think I may need to put the four in. So I'm going to place one here while I'm looking at it. Just grab the glue. Take these tags off. Do the same with these. Again, I'm just manipulating them so they don't just look all clumped together like that. And I'm going to put these on either side, on each side, shall I say. Right, let me untwine that one in, bring it in a bit. like that and then turn it around so it's facing towards you so I can get to this back and then one here And if you feel that you need to manipulate any of your greenery that you've placed in, then that's okay. Just bring that slightly in. Take that off to there slightly. And the reason I'm doing this is basically to try and fill in areas there we go bring that one slightly up right so they're in now so we need because i've got three our hydrangeas to be around here because i don't know whether to put them at the bottom or not yeah i'm gonna because they're quite big and bulbous and then obviously we'll need to keep the airiness through it and cut this at an angle. See these are thick stems as well. Oh, let me have a quick drink. Just going to move those. Oh, they're very pretty. So I think we definitely need one around here. So do I place 
yeah one here and just lower at the bottom okay we need to be giving it oh my good gracious me do some of you have trouble with things like this when they're really thick stems fluff it up a little so one there I'm going to put one here that and then get the other one oh. and I'm going to bring it round where you're looking at it so if I just move it around because we need something down here and things in there now we've got our purple wispy bits for the movement I've got some off cuts I may instead of using the fresh stems put picks on them to elongate them because all the others I've got are all fresh big new stems and if I've got, oh, I can't get this off. I've got oddments on, or little bits like this. I might, might as well use them because I can bring some down at the bottom and have some at the top. Let me take that leaf off. It's too far down. If I just show you just by placing the odd the darker color purple sets it off and then with the uh, color lilies because we've got the dark purple if i just place it in i'm not going to glue it in it yet but then bring the, the white ones color lilies and have the movement then hanging slightly over at the bottom but i do want some taller ones as well just to sit again if i show you <laughs> just in here to bounce off of the white carnations so we're going to put picks on them what color stem green so let's make these longer it's great what you can do with your with your oddments that you can place bits and bobs and add extra picks instead of having to just save them until you use them at the bottom you can add a pick by making it longer and also to save on using your, your longer stems that you've not used yet so I'm not going to cut anything off because I need the length of the stem so if I show you, we'll just go in there. And as you can see, that's going next to the white, so it's going to bounce off of it. So we'll do that. How many do I want at the bottom? Where did I put that other one, guys? Oh my gracious, is there. So place one there, put one here, I'm going to put these in the corners as well, and one down there. So I've got three here, take that leaf off at the bottom as well, and do it on all of them. So I've got a bit of a stem to play with. Oh, 
Oh, my heart rate's calmed down a little bit now. <laughs> The guys outside have just said to me, oh, it's very clayey soil. Uh, yeah, we live uh, around this area where we live. The soil is quite clayey. The, I mean, on, on our front garden, we've had to buy topsoil and everything and dig out the clay when we first moved in. Because you couldn't plant anything in. It was too much. And nothing was growing, it was just dying. And it, oh, it didn't look right, very nice. We didn't realize it was clay, nobody told us, we wasn't warned. But we soon found, we soon found out. We've spent lots of pennies on getting topsoil, ton bags full of it. And then we mixed it all. Oh gosh, and we mixed it, mixed it all. At the time, we couldn't find any way where you could buy a ton of compost. So we had to buy separate bags of compost. And we bought, I think it was about 200 and something bags of compost to mix in with the topsoil for the nutrition for the plants to grow. And all the digging, oh. That's probably where I got my arthritis from. Let's blame that. So then one more. So I've had to move everything. Me and my son yesterday in the pouring rain, we had to move everything on our driveway so the builders have got room to put the new fencing up. And we did it in the pouring rain and got wet through. No one we will place there. So I've got a bit of dark purple also incorporated into it. So I'm not going, I'm going to take the bottom leaves off again. So I've got something to play with to put these in. I'm just going to cut it at an angle. Now I'm placing these also around the bottom like that as well so we've got the colour at the bottom take that leaf off as well If you see any glue strings, like I've just spotted one there, I mean, I will go over it with my brush. I always double check with it because I don't want glue strings everywhere. This one here as well. Did I put that one in? No. Yeah, so if you get glue, glue on the uh, aspidistra leaf and then you, you don't see it and you forget to remove it, don't pull it. Leave it there. Honestly, get a marker pen, a permanent marker pen in green and colour over it. Don't pull it off. That's another thing that I, I do as well. If I forget and I haven't seen, like I've seen one here where I forgot, 
I have got a green marker pen that will go over it and I just colour it over and there's one there as well colour it over to hide it because it's waste time getting a bit more aspidistra leaf to try and cover over with the, another piece of aspid because you've got that many stems now in the way it's just not going to work it'll look more messy so we don't want those so I'll put those back I was at the time considering daisies, but I'm not going to put daisies in. I think this looks lovely. So let's lower these now and bring these down. In fact, I might cut them slightly shorter. And then we'll put our wisteria on. And bring these look like that, just so they're popping out. those. I'm going to do this one as well. Again I'm going in each corner just to give it a bit of movement. neighbour over the road who went in hospital he's had his operation he's had a really serious operation done uh, he wasn't they wasn't sure whether he was going to cancel I contacted his daughter last night they've gone ahead so oh that's great news because it was it was I can't say what it was guys but it was really serious and uh, we were all worried that they'd cancel and if they did oh that wouldn't be good news Right, that one's moving off. Oh, it's caught, that's all right. Uh, let me just come and have a look from your your angle. Right now, is that popping out too too much? Or is it because it's not centralised? I need to just see it square on everybody. I don't think I've gone out too far but it is quite big but you can still see the frame so let me think do I need to maneuver these slightly up I'm going to just manipulate things but I think maybe sticking out too far it's hard to really judge when you you know when you stood here and you're doing them again that's why I tend to say always stand back Move that one slightly here. Bring that one up. Oh, I took the head off. <laughs> oh, gosh. Right. Let me glue it on. I don't want it coming off. Where is it? Okay, let me come and have a look. It doesn't feel like I've moved it very well. Right, I can see. Excuse my head, everybody. I 
that's better. Now it's bothering me that it's too big down here. What could I put down there that will hide away some of the bucket? Do I? Oh gosh, all the oak things nearly fell out again. I've got the philodendron, as you can see, in white. I just want to see. I'm going to chop one off. Just one. Yeah, I think they would look nice along the bottom. Again, just to take the bareness away from the actual container. So. Five. And because they hang down, I could put that like that. And they're coming out. They're not... What's the word for it? They're not out, they're out. You know, sometimes I hear kids going, they're out, but they're not out. Or they're out, out. <laughs> I hear that a lot. I, I, I get what they're saying. They're, so they're, in their little terminology, they're out, but they're not out, out. <laughs> so basically I think the most saying is, they are out, but they're not out too much. Uh, that's what I'm saying, but I could easily push it slightly a bit more in so it's around similar, you know. No, oh gosh, it's a similar level of what these are, but they're not uh, coming out too far to the point where it looks too much. That's basically what I'm, tr <laughs> I'm trying to say. And I'm going to put one, four in, one in each corner, because they are quite big leaves. And again, I want to take off that blandness of this container. And that's what I could see. Let's see if I can get that one around there as well. You just twist, twist the uh, leaf on the stem. I wonder if that, like that. So I want. So I don't want no more of those. I do like these actually, even though they're very big. I do really like them. I have to search again now where I've got these from. I always forget where I get things from. And I have to research it again and look on my orders. one there so that I'm, what I'm doing is basically putting one leaf either side of the corner again to balance it that may need to go in a little bit more and then the purple hydrangeas we've got something to bounce off of I will have a look because if they look too much or some aren't in the correct place and I will alter them or if they're out too much so again I'm coming just over where you are guys oh that looks better that looks much much better right down to our final floral all right, let's untangle this. That's the top. Now that's the bottom. If I just cut that there for one moment, I may take some of these leaves off. I may not even put them on, or I may entwine it. Because these are wired. 
that leaves bugging me. That leaf here is bugging me. It's too long. I'm just going to take that one off too. Again, if I don't think they look right, then I'll just leave it as it is. It's just something popped into my head. And I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. I give it a bit more of a nice theme. Now, do I? That one is going that way. quite like that guys. Now I could attach it with a white tie wrap just to hold that in place. Let me attach it and then I'm gonna I'm gonna come and have a look because if I don't like it I'll take it off. So I'm just going to keep it like that a moment. Just come around the front. Because it might be in the way of everything else, what you can see. Now I'm going to stand back. Mm, no. No, no. No, it's in the way. It's in the way of everything here. So it's coming off. I can't have that. Oh my good gracious, I've got to be taller. I am quite tall. I am five foot seven, which apparently is tall for a lady. I don't think so. They say that apparently the average height for a lady is five foot six. Who comes up with these ideas and says what well, that's that how it's supposed to be? I'm going to tie up these together to hold them. So I'm not going to put anything on there. I want to know if I sh should put a ribbon or something. But then if I start to put a ribbon on, will that also take it away? I ask myself. So, I've never got any spear, something spear, yes I did one for a video the other day, so I'm just going to use this as, an, as a, an example just for me, I know it's not the right colour but I'm just going to use it, when I did the video on showing her lady Julia Johnson how to attach bows onto wreaths. I've kept them together in case, and I thought, well, I may use them for something. So I'm going to just use this like a template, really, just to have a look. Just fluffing it up. Because if I don't fluff it up, then I won't, I won't, you know, see the benefit if it works. It will give me the same idea. No, <laughs> no, no, I didn't think it would. I thought it may, it may look too much. So, the answer's no. <laughs> so I think, guys, that, that is it. Now this, like I say, can go, if you're having a party, you know, on the floor in a party, or if you've got a tall, a tall pedestal stand, which is like virtually just similar to a great big candlestick holder, really, and stand it on that without the frame, 
that would look nice. Things like this would look, where churches have the big pedestal ones, this would look lovely on a pedestal in a church. Um, nice and fresh and welcoming. Um, and the colours again, I love the colours. And I haven't covered the bottom, you know, with filler foliage. If you feel that you want to, by all means, go around and fill it up. But I have got these big philodendron leaves and that, uh, what are also taking some of it up. If you want to, you could put them all around and put one in the centre of the here as well on either side to have like a circle or sort of a circle along the bottom to look like it's a plate. You know, it's sitting on a plate. But um, that is our arrangement for today. Um, and I wanted to work within the, within the pedestal stand, not on top of it. And I thought that would look lovely also. And even if you wanted this in a corner, you know, as soon as you walk through your door and um, if you've got a little, nice little, um, oh, what can you call it? A display box or cabinet or something like that. And you can stick this in the center or in a corner of a room. It would look nice like that as well. So again, I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry about having to pause the video for my poor cat but I had to make sure she was safe. And uh, I hope you like the colours and I hope you like, you know, how it's not as full as I do, like my wreaths and things like I did yesterday. And it's airy, it's got movement. So if, the wind, if it was outside, the wind blow, it would move with the wind, um, you know, and it would look beautiful again, either in a, for a party, for a wedding, or for a birthday party, or in a church, or in your home, on the top of the stairs, anything like that, um, it will look beautiful. So, if you've got anything like this, uh, give it a go. If not, they're not expensive. I don't, I don't look for the expensive things because I like to do my videos and show people you can buy things on a budget. You, you haven't, with the economy especially, you haven't got to delve deep into your pockets and try and keep up with where you see these professional designers online where they have these big beautiful vases what perhaps look like they could be worth hundreds of pounds just for the vase alone and um, you know or a stand like this they could have lots of cast iron ones you know with swirls in what could look like they're hundreds of pounds or hundreds of dollars worth just for the standalone. I'd, I'd love that, you know, but again, I haven't got the money to spend like that, you know. I'm a, I'm, I just work by myself. I haven't, you know, so I hunt around for the cheapest. If I put something on the Google and put like a pedestal stand for flowers, you get an option. You get some pictures pop up of different companies that sell them. Sometimes I see that the two or three companies do the exact same as this, but they're more expensive than each other. So I go for the cheaper one. Uh, this could be, I don't know, hypothetically, this could be £10. Another company or $10 uh, or €10, Euros, whichever. And then another company will charge 20 And then another company will perhaps charge 25 why would, in my, this is just me, logically, why would I go for the £25 one when I can get it for 10 You know, makes sense. And plus, you're saving your money. So the other 10 or £15 or dollars or euros, you could buy some more floral with. Makes sense, don't it? So I am a budget hunter. I really do go for quality or but at a low cost. I'm very funny like that because again the economy nowadays people can just not afford to pay for really big expensive things especially if you're just a small business like myself if you're a great big company and you're really a big established business and your uh, your annual income a year you're bringing in perhaps 1.5 million then you have it a problem but when you've got a small company like this and you're not bringing that much money in you have to look for the cheaper option, but also at great quality. And that's all I do for my things. 
you know, and that's not just for these, that's for everything, you know. You can buy lovely flowers from a wholesaler, what may charge for one stem like these roses, and they may charge for one rose, six pound, just for one. Now, if I can get, I don't know, I can't remember how these, which, the, these what these was worth, but for example, if I could get the same or look as just as good than the expensive roses, and you can't really tell a difference, for two pounds, now what are you gonna do? I can buy three for what they charge for one. That's all I do, guys. I don't go around buying, you know, the really good quality ones because I'm also on a budget, you know, just like yourselves. I'm only human, there's only so much you can afford and there's only, you know, a certain price range that you can, you can spend. So, this is all quality. I mean, the, the carnations are beautiful. They're so realistic, you know, and the delphiniums, they're all silk and the hydrangeas, they're beautiful. But I didn't get them at a massive amount. You know, I've got a wholesaler where when you have a wholesaler, when you run a business, they are slightly cheaper than what you would buy if you was a general public. But I make sure I hunt around. That's why I've got several different wholesalers because they each charge different prices for different things, for the same thing, should I say. So I go with the cheaper option, but make sure it's quality. So I hope that helps and helps you when you come to looking for something, because the less you spend, the more you can spend on more floral than what somebody else would charge for just for one thing. So anyway, I hope uh, that this morning that the uh, little video on about your flower and your lines and think harmony and things like that, the rules of flower engine helps. If not, just keep playing it back and uh, it will sink in. Trust me, it will, it did with me. <laughs> and uh, and I'm 53 now, so. So anyway, and if you've got something like this or even if you've got a cheaper one, you know, you can buy what looks just as good or if it's just, you don't, you want it white but they've only got black, spray it spray it i do that as well with things if this was black i would have sprayed it white but fortunately i got the white you know you just got to think about your options you know for your own pockets of what you what you your budget is and your finance so again give it a go and try and do something within a frame it doesn't have to be this sort of a frame could be a smaller one because you can get these in different sizes uh, it can be a smaller one and again i've not got a ceramic pot it's a plastic one and all i've done is put some pebbles in off of my garden instead of buying the pebbles the decorative pebbles you won't see them i've just got garden pebbles off my garden for the weight simple so i hope it all helps and i hope you enjoyed watching me do this and uh, please subscribe and share and like and give us a little comment or a thumbs up to let me know, you know, what you thought of it and if it helps, you know, for your own uh, arrangements that you do. So enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and uh, stay safe and take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.